All right. So one question at a time. Isosceles triangle has a peak angle of 76. State the measure of one base angle. So the idea is that this is what's happening. So the two base angles will therefore be the same. So that should be 52 degrees. So that's worth one mark. Okay. What is the size of one interior angle of a nonagon? Uh, there you should have realized that a nonagon, right, means that it has nine sides. So I go with nine minus two, which is seven times 180 divided by n, which is nine, so 140. So that's one mark as well. Everything is worth one mark. Number three, each interior angle angles of a regular polygon is 150. How many sides does the polygon have? Tricky, I don't know if it's tricky, may or may not be, if you were paying attention, right? So we're, what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> knowing that the interior and exterior are supplementary, we subtract to get the exterior angle. And then we use this formula, right? Substituting the 30 in to this formula. And then we get a cross multiply and divide scenario. So it's 12 sides. So this is how you solve proportions. You put that one down under the lonely number on the other side and cross multiply diagonally and divide by what's left. So 12 sides there. Four, what's the sum of interior angles in a hexagon? That's just n minus two, right? Hexagon n is equal to six, right? So it's just four times 180, which is 720. Okay. Next, given the, given the hexagon to the right, find the measure of angle x. I already got you to find the sum of all interior angles in a hexagon, which is 720. This is true for any hexagon. It doesn't have to be regular. So if you notice, right, you count one, two, three, four, five, six sides. This would be considered a non-regular or irregular, right? So then you basically start with 720 and subtract the ones you know, right? 120, 90, and so forth. And that'll leave you with the one that's left, which is 110 degrees. Is the hexagon to the right a regular polygon? And the answer is no, because regular means, right, because all angles are different, which means that all sides have different lengths. If you wrote down uh, no, because they have to all have the same side length and the same angles, angle measures, something like that, I would, I would accept that as your, but just saying yes or no, doesn't give you the mark there. Okay, so you have to have an explanation. They're e equal in angles and equal in side lengths. Number seven, what's the sum of exterior angles of a hexagon? It's always 360, always. Keyword is exterior, right? So if I were to go on this particular shape and I extend as I'm traveling around, right? I did that and I found, right, this would be 50, 70, 90, 60, and we just found that this is 110, so this is 70, and this is 40, right? If you were to add them all up, you get 360, okay? Right, so 60 and 70 is 130, and 40 is 170, 220, 290, hold on, something went wrong here. That's 130, 170, 220, 
can I, it's 380 something. I, I probably messed up somewhere. should be 360. Is this uh, the 110, is that right? I'm just gonna check here, making sure that I don't give you the wrong answer. No, oh, I already know where I messed up. Yeah, thank you, Manvir. This is supposed to be 20. It's 160 and 20. There you go. So they add up to 360. Phew. I almost uh, took down the whole math society by, by disproving that it's always 360. Anyways, there we go. So we're out of seven here so far. Thank you, Manvir. And number eight, true or false? The lines A and B and C, D are parallel. You look at these two and it would be false. Explain, because the alternate interior angles are not congruent or they're not the same or something like that. That's the explanation. So I would give you half for this and half for the explanation, but you can't just put down false. If you put true, then you lose the mark, you get nothing, okay? Number nine, A, B, and C, D are parallel, we're told. E, uh, e H is a transversal. What's the, si what's the size of angle E, F, B? So they want this here, okay? What you could have done is subtract, right? This is, this is along a straight line, so you to find this one here, you just subtract 54 from 180, you get 126, and you know that these two are corresponding. So that's 126. You don't have to explain. If you just have 126, you get the marks there. So we're out of nine so far. And this one would have been a bit trickier. Uh, it's a little messy, and I'll explain what happened here. Right now, as it stands, you don't have a name for these. The x plus 12 and the 3x plus 48, uh, you don't have a name for. So you have a couple of choices, right? The one I went with is the vertically opposite property, right? If this angle is 3x plus 48 degrees, then this angle across from it will also be 3x plus 48. Same thing with this one, right? You can use the vertically opposite, which is your friend, right? That property. So now these two, we have a name for their consecutive interior, and we know they add up to 180, okay? So we add them all up. I don't bother with brackets because they're all adding. You add up your numbers, that adds up to 60, and you end up with 180 there. The X and the three X, Give you 4x, you subtract 60 from both sides, you divide both sides by 4, so x is equal to 30 degrees. So there's your one mark for that one as well. Probably worth more than one, but for today, it's just one. So if you got that wrong, you only lose one mark, even though that would clearly be a two mark question on a test. Okay. Here we, that's it. Uh, so put a mark down out of two. First name and initial of last name on your paper. And make sure you put, write down the cohort that you're in. And I will uh, post the, a slot for you to submit this to me.
the Thursday. No, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm just clicking on because I have it saved. I have to open it and then post it. Now I, I did post it now. So double check. You can see it. So we'll wait a couple minutes for that to happen. In the meantime, get your notes out. And as soon as you're done uploading, oh, cohort number, yeah. Group number, what group number you're in. And then, and then start writing this down, okay, tessellations. I don't know if you can still hear me, but it's all, it's freezing up on me here. Doesn't like a uh, smart notebook. That's too bad. I might uh, have to log off once, guys. No, I stopped presenting. I'm just trying to...
Sorry guys. It completely froze up on me. One second, I'm going to try this again. There you go. It should show up. Do you see a bunch of triangles? Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, just leave your, your phone. Just leave it here. Okay. okay, so look at the screen here. And I will show you what we're trying, what we're going to try to do. Okay, with various examples, because it's hard to gr graph this or to draw it yourself. Okay, so essentially, we want to see if we could use, like, let's say we are, all we have is triangles, right? So you kind of want to just imagine a point where you're going to join them together. So I make a nice red dot there. And then I'm going to try to see, can I, can I, at this point, point right here which we know by the way is around this thing it's 360 degrees right we know that so am I going to be able to fill regular in this case triangles which would be equilateral triangles can I can I fill this gap so I'm going to all place them around that point right so obviously this isn't perfect Right? But what I'm what we're gonna try to do is can you actually using this shape fill that junction there around the red dot? Right? And can you can you fill that 360 degree space around it? And in this case it would be a yes, right? Because uh, let's just remember the fact that every single interior angle of, of the triangle is what? Of an equilateral triangle. It's always 60, right? So you could actually fit six, you could use six triangles, um, equilateral triangles, so it'd be regular polygons, obviously, to fill in, to fill in this, uh, this 360 degree circle, so to speak, okay? And uh, that's what you need to remember. So let's try a different example. So um, I'm going to try uh, let's try something that doesn't work, which we're going to calculate in a bit. So let's say we use pentagons. Okay. Let's clone that one. So imagine for a second, again, this is this is the point around which we're going to try to lay these tiles that are uh, shaped as a pentagon. So you pick any corner, right? And they're all going to be the same. So you, you lay this tile right there. And then we're going to turn this one so that it works. I'm going to place it right next to it like that. And we're going to bring in one more tile to try to fill in that gap. And you can tell that pentagons, if all you had available to you be pentagons, regular pentagons, you would not be able to completely fill this gap. And that's when we say we cannot use it to tessellate. Okay, it cannot be used for tiling. So the examples I'm showing you are all based on uh, one type of shape. What, we, what will happen is you will be given two or maybe even three different shapes uh, to, to fill in. I could also ask you, what is a possible shape that can still be used to fill in this remaining gap? I mean, in this case, it wouldn't work. There is no shape that you can. So this is visually what's happening. Mathematically, we'll have to just do our calculation. So let me show you some other ones. Uh, so these ones, this is what you see here is octagons and squares. 
right? If I were to use a, a regular square and a regular octagon, you can actually see that around you pick a you pick a corner, right? You pick this right here. You could use one, two octagons and a square to fill this gap there. And then if you go over to this intersection here, you still have two octagons and one square filling in this gap. So you only need to check for one, one intersection, one vertex, right? And if that works, it will work. It will. You can test the latent, just copy that pattern as many times as you want, and it will work. Okay. So that's what we're doing. That's what this section is all about. Okay. In case you're wondering. So I will take this down again and stop presenting that. And get back to my document camera. Hopefully it doesn't crash. There it is. So you should now, I mean, it's transitioning still, it's thinking. You should see my document camera again. Let's give it one second. You should now see my document camera again. Okay, so we're gonna keep going with our notes. So we're going to do some examples. Do the following tessellate. Pentagons, we, could you use them to tessellate? We know that it doesn't work based on the visual I just gave you but we're going to mathematically show that that's the case. So find the interior angle. Okay, so we're going to find the interior angle of a pentagon. Right, the interior angle of a pentagon would be five minus two times one eighty over five. Right, and that's one hundred eight. So that's your first step, okay? Then divide, you go 360 degrees because that's what we need to fill. You divide it by 108 and see what you get. If you don't get a nice round number, which you can already tell, 3.33 and it keeps going, right? Okay. Therefore, can't tessellate. So that's that's how you conclude that. You do your math. You could actually, after this, just say can't tessellate because you can't use 0.3 of a tile, right? That's the assumption we're making. We can't use partial shapes. The hexagons. Oops. Could you use hexagons for this? Again, find the interior angle. Interior angle of a six-sided shape would be six minus two times 180 divided by six. And that's 120 degrees. Then you check 360 divided by 120 would be exactly three hexagons.
therefore can tessellate. Can tessellate. And I could keep going, right? We could use uh, heptagons, octagons, keep going. You just do the same thing over and over again. Um, but what if I give you a combination? Using triangles. squares and hexagons. Could you tessellate, could you tile a floor? It doesn't have to be tiling necessarily, like if you're making a blanket and you want different colors in those shapes and you're sewing this blanket, would you be able to make it, right? It doesn't have to be tiling necessarily, but most questions deal with tiling when you're doing these. Or it will just say, can you tessellate, right? Can you do that? So using triangle squares and hexagons, this is what I want you to do, okay? And we're assuming they're all regular, by the way. It wouldn't work if they're not regular, right? So the interior angle of a triangle, we know already, you don't have to calculate that, I'm okay with you just stating it, is 60 degrees. The interior angle of a square, we know is 90, you don't need to calculate that. Hexagon, we just did, right? So interior angle of a hexagon is 120 degrees. So check, use each shape at least once. That's important when you're gonna tell me whether or not that's gonna work. So you start with 360 and you subtract. You take a triangle and if you wanna go, okay, let's see, right? Minus 90. That's a square and then minus 120. So you're going to subtract one of each for sure, because you have to be able to use one of each. When you subtract that, go ahead and do that, right? 150, 270, right? You're left with 90 degrees. So which other shape now can you use to fill in that remaining gap? Because basically what you're doing is, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, right? You have a triangle here, right? You have a square here, use the hexagon there, right? So what remaining, what can you still use here? According to the degrees here, you can use use a square to fill remaining gap. And sometimes I, I can't cover every single scenario, but sometimes you might be able to use a square and a triangle to fill that remaining gap. Who knows, right? So you have to be keep subtracting from what's left until you have zero, okay? That is the key here. So it, this your answer has to be like this a combination of one triangle two squares and a hexagon can tessellate and this is your conclusion here Because watch what we did, right? 360 minus this, this, and a hexagon. And then there's a square left. So that's where the two squares come from, right? And my final. So that combination would actually fill in all the gap around that point where you're putting them together. So 
So this is another square here. Square, which has 90, and then a 60, and then a 120 there to make 360. Okay. All right, we will now, um, I will ask you to work on, this is gonna be your homework, because at this point you can do everything that's on here. And I will, uh, I will post the answer key as well. It's a chapter test, a mock chapter test, right? That's from a textbook. So, as soon as you, I'm going to leave that up there. I'm just going to show you which one I mean. And then, so go find this handout right here. We should have this handout. So it actually covers everything we've done so far up to this point. And so find that chapter test. I can also post it if you, for whatever reason, haven't um, um, gotten that far or if you didn't pick up this package, which I think everybody has it at this point. Um, if you don't have it, let me know, okay, then, then I'll post it, but I'll post the answer key. So that's what we're gonna do for the rest of today's class. So I think I'm just gonna let you uh, sign off if, you're, if you don't have any questions. So I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Um, and I think group, which group comes, before you go, which group comes in on Monday? I will just remind you. I have group two coming in on Monday. I know tomorrow's Friday, but still just want to uh, make sure you know that. Group two comes in on Monday. And other than that, you can sign off. Have a good day, guys. And this is the worksheet you're working on. So, group two. Okay, thank you. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's the twenty third.